calculate the perpendicular bisector of a segment. Uh, this is a free video tutorial that you can find at mathwarehouse.com slash pb for perpendicular bisector. There's also other stuff at that webpage, a free worksheet that you can download, and uh, some other goodies. The goal of this tutorial is to be able to answer a question like that on the screen. Write the equation of the perpendicular bisector that goes through the line segment with endpoints 2, 1, and 6, negative 3. Now before we try to answer some questions on perpendicular bisector, let's talk about what a perpendicular bisector actually is. If we have a point, let's say we have the point 2, 1 here, we have some other point, maybe, maybe this is like 6, 4. So here's our segment, this is our original segment, and we want its perpendicular bisector. What we're looking for is a segment that cuts it perfectly in half. This half will equal that half. I, in other words, the original segment will be bisected, and our new line will be perpendicular to the original line. Okay, so going, going back to how we're going to approach these problems, in general, you'll have 2, 1, 6, 4, you'll have a pair of points. And what we know is that the line we want right here will cut this in half. In other words, it will go through the midpoint of the original segment. So this give the midpoint will give us a line that is on the line we're trying to get. In other words, the midpoint will be a, a point on the perpendicular bisector. What else do we need to calculate uh, the equation of a line? Remember, we're going to be looking for y equals mx plus b. All right, well, we have a point on that line. We have the midpoint. We're also going to need the slope to be able to get the full equation. So what else do we know about the lines that we're trying to find? We know it is perpendicular to the original segment. So its slope will be the negative reciprocal of the original equation slope. So there, there will, is how we will get the m. So this is going to be the general approach that we're going to take. We will be able to find the slope by taking the negative reciprocal of the original equation slope and we'll be able to find a point on that line by finding the midpoint of the original line with the slope and a point we'll be able to calculate the perpendicular bisectors equation we'll be able to write the equation so let's try a specific problem let's find the perpendicular bisector of <clears throat> this segment here so st the first thing that we should do is calculate the original slope. So let's do the change in y over change in x. 1 minus negative 3 over 2 minus 6. Right, this is the top will just be 1 plus 3 or 4, and the bottom will be 2 minus 6 or negative 4. So our original slope is negative 1. Right, this is the slope of the uh, actual segment. We don't really care about that. We're trying to find the slope of the perpendicular bisector. So remember, we perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals. And the negative reciprocal of negative 1 is just 1. So if our goal is to be able to write y equals mx plus b, the slope intercept form of the perpendicular bisector, we already have m, or slope. The slope is 1. So, what's next? With the slope, and if we can um, get a point, we can find the y intercept. So, let's work towards getting a point on the negative reciprocal. I mean, sorry, on the perpendicular bisector. Remember, the perpendicular bisector goes through the midpoint of the original segment. So the next step is going to be to find the midpoint of the endpoints there. So if you remember how to find the midpoint, 
you just add up the x values and divide them by 2. Add up the y values and divide them by 2. 2 plus 6 is 8. Divide that by 2 and you get 4. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Divide that by 2 and you get negative 1. So 4, negative 1 is the midpoint of that segment. All right, so we're in good shape. We um, have a point on our new line and we have its slope. So we can now substitute. Oh, sorry, the, the slope is actually 1. We can substitute this x and y into this equation to solve for b. So you get negative 1 equals 1 times 4 plus b. Negative 1 equals 4 plus b. Subtract 4 from both sides, right? b equals negative 5. So here's our b. So, you know, the last step is just to actually write the equation out. y equals 1x minus 5, or y equals x plus 5. That's right, or y equals x minus 5. So let's just recap what we did, and then we'll try one more practice problem. First off, our goal is to get a, um, an equation in slope-intercept form. And to do that, we need the slope and the y-intercept. So the slope is pretty easy. Calculate the slope of the original segment. Take its negative reciprocal. The negative reciprocal will be the slope of the perpendicular bisectors. Since perpendicular bisectors have slopes, sorry, since perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals. Calculate the midpoint to figure out a, a point that will be on the line whose equations we're trying whose equations we're trying to find. So get the midpoint and then substitute the x and the y into the equation. Solve for b, and now you have your um, equation of the perpendicular bisector. If you want to double check, you can make sure this, that you didn't make a silly error in the last step. You can always substitute the midpoint in to make sure it works. If you put 4 in for x, you'll see, yeah, we do get negative 1. So let's try one more problem. Let's write the equation of the perpendicular bisector that goes through a segment with endpoints negative 1, 1 and 7, negative 5. So if you remember, the first thing that we did is calculate the slope of the original segment. Change in y for change in x. 1 minus negative 5, negative 1 minus 7, 1 plus 5 is becomes 6 on the top, and this becomes negative 8, which you can simplify to be negative 3 fourths. Again, this is the this is the um, slope of the original segment. We're looking for the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So then what we're going to do is take the negative reciprocal of the original slope, which becomes positive 4 thirds. Right, so this is the slope of the new line. Now let's figure out a point on the perpendicular bisector. If you remember from before, we know the midpoint will be on the perpendicular bisector, so let's just calculate the midpoint, which will be negative 1 plus 7 over 2, which will just be 6 over 2 or 3. And the y value will be... 1 minus 5 over 2, which is just negative 4 over 2, or negative 2. So now we have a, a, a slope of our new line and a point on our new line. So we can write y equals 4 thirds x plus b, and then substitute this x and y in there to, to get the y-intercept. So let's do that. Three, I'm sorry y is negative 2. Negative 2 equals 4 thirds times 3 plus b. So negative 2 equals 4 plus b. I'm running out of room here, so I'll just verbally finish up this last part. Subtract 4 from both sides, and you end up with b equals negative 6. So we have a slope, we have the y-intercept, 
and we can write our equation y equals 4 thirds x minus 6. And remember to make sure you didn't make a silly error in this last part you can substitute the midpoint in and, make, and, it, and the equation should hold true. So if we put in 3 here it should work out to be the negative 2. Let's see, does negative 2 equal 4 thirds times 3 minus 6? Negative 2 does indeed equal 4 minus 6, so it looks like, at least for the last part, we didn't mess up. Okay, that's it for an introduction to calculating the perpendicular bisector. Again, more information and worksheets, etc. can be found at mathwarehouse.com slash pb.